students. Today, we read Mask of the Red Death by Edgar Allan Poe in class, but we didn't get to go over much of the rich symbolism within the text. So kick back, listen to this video, and take some notes because we won't be able to go over this again until we go over a study guide for the Poe test next week. First from the story, we'll start by talking about Prince Prospero. You can see in his name how he really comes from prosperity, um, which makes sense because he's the king and he's throwing this extravagant ball for all of the masqueraders in the kingdom. Uh, this translates to his arrogance, which ultimately leads to his downfall and the death that him and all of the masqueraders face by the Mask of the Red Death at the end of the story. Uh, now it's important to note here that the Red Death was also called, um, was a name for tuberculosis, which as we've studied in our introductory portion of Poe, that uh, a lot of people in his life died from tuberculosis. So it's pretty symbolic and important that everyone in the story died from the Red Death tuberculosis at the end of the story. On a greater context, Prospero symbolizes the end of feudal Europe and the death of such rigid class structure in Europe. So it's pretty important that he dies at the end, again he's the prince, and the whole thing is a greater symbolic gesture from Poe about tuberculosis. Next in the story we have the masqueraders and they are the symbolism of humanity within the text. Um, they are the monotonous masses, they make up humankind, and again, just overall represent humanity at the party. With that in mind, they pair up with the seven ballrooms that we'll talk about later, the seven rooms that were all different colors that they traveled through. And together, they represent the seven stages of man, the seven stages of life. It just depends on who's uh, translating the text. Next, we'll talk about the ebony clock. It's pretty important that it's ebony because black is the last room. Black is one of the two colors that symbolizes death in this story. Um, it really represents time, of course, since it is a clock and how we were always running out of time in life and um, it's a very, you know, time is a very beginning and end. The day starts at 12 o'clock a.m. and the day ends at midnight. So that's also um, the symbolism of daytime and time we'll talk about later when we talk about the rooms. All right, so we've talked about some of the characters and um, we talked about the clock, but now we need to talk about color because color is a really big part of Mask of the Red Death, red being in the title, so red will be the first color that we talk about. So red symbolizes, again, at a greater level, tuberculosis, but in the story, it represents um, blood, despair, gruesomeness, death, everything that the characters face, whether they're, you know, the common folk that weren't even invited to the party and the serfs and the indentured servants um, who weren't important enough to be invited by the prince, the masqueraders, the prince himself. Um, it just represents the gruesomeness of the time, finality, abruptness, you know, they're going through this party and they die right at midnight by the Mask of the Red Death, so red is really important in this story, and it's probably the most important color next to black that you need to know about. All right, next up, we're gonna be talking about color symbolism throughout the rest of the story. We talked about how red is important, and I mentioned how the black room being the last room is really important, but um, other than that, you just need to kind of know that the other colors are there and that they all symbolize something. So for this, we have um, the order of the rooms that they're in, and we also have the direction that they go in, which is pretty important. Um, the blue room is the first room, and it represents the birth of man, newness, being fresh, exciting. It's the first room that they enter outside of the ballroom. Then we have the purple room, which symbolizes transition, royalty, it shows aging. Um, purple is generally the color of royalty, so um, that's you know something to know, but really here it just shows the next sign of, of aging and not being as fresh as blue. 
we have green, which again is generally a universal symbol of youth, vitality, growing, springtime is generally associated with green. Um, so the green room is one of the two rooms in the middle. Uh, orange, then we move on to from green. And orange is maturity, vibrancy, peakness. Orange is a vibrant color. It represents coming of age in this case. It's the other middle of the room um, of the hallway. So it's important. Then we move on to white, which symbolizes purity, longevity, aging. You can think of, you know, at this point, someone in their life would be an old man or an old woman, like white hair. Violet, which represents knowledge, wisdom, finality. Um, some sources will say this is the eminency of death and knowing that death is upon us. And the black room, which, like I said, with red is very symbolic of death, gravity, ending. So you may have noticed that I had suns on top of the hallway, and that's because the rooms are set from east to west, which is the same way that the sun sets, and that ties back into that clock theme, that time, that day to night theme. Um, it is really important that you note that the rooms go from east to west. That is the most important thing that you're gonna need to know for your test. Um, but I might even give you a bonus point or two if you can name all of the colors or even more so if you can name them all in order from east to west. All right, again, that's uh, all we have for Mask of the Red Death. You guys have read it, you understand the symbolism, you have the handout if you wanna go back and reread it and study um, with each other before our test next week. Um, again, you should have taken pretty de decent notes, um, the color red, the organization of the rooms, the prints, the masqueraders, the clock are really the things that you need to take away from this assignment and this reading. Um, and then tonight for homework, after watching this and making sure that all of your notes are organized, I want you guys to read The Black Cat for tomorrow. And we'll continue with Poe from there. Thanks guys, have a great day.